What's up, everybody? Welcome to Real Time for the Real Everyday Movie Fan. I'm Josh Williams. And I'm Ryan Murphy. And today we are giving you our real time review of Solo, a Star Wars story. That's right. Solo, a Star Wars story. Sars, Aldrin Ehrenreich, uh, Junis Suotamo, uh, Donald Glover, Amelia Clark, Woody Harrelson, Tandy Newton, Phoebe Waller Bridge, uh, Paul Bettany, John Favreau. Awesome cast. Um, let's Great go cast. ahead and get right into it. Josh, what'd you think of the movie? Uh, it was okay. I mean, I, I enjoyed it. It wasn't what I was hoping. I mean, I will say the one concern I had, I didn't have any more after seeing it, but besides the movie as a whole, it was fun. I just didn't think there was much depth to it. I'm going to probably give it, I still found it enjoyable. I'm still going to give it a 7 out of 10. Okay. I still kind of enjoyed it quite well. The one concern I had, which I thought, like, uh, Aldrin, uh, how do you say his last name? Aldrin Aaron Ray. Aldrin Aaron Ray is Han Solo. I was concerned, if you remember watching our trailer reaction, that mm -hmm. I wasn't sure he would be able to capture... I don't the, think either one of us were, yeah. Yeah, I didn't think he was able to capture the characterization. Not not Han, not Harrison Ford's Han Solo. <laughs> yeah. I'm talking about the character characterization, of, yeah. of Han Solo. Not, yeah, not Harrison Ford's, but mm -hmm. his. And he did that. I feel like as a younger Han Solo, he is able to capture, and you can kind of see the growth and what he became when you see him in the fourth movie. Mm -hmm. Or sorry, in Star Wars, you know what I mean. Yeah. In episode four. But besides that, yeah, I feel like they did a good job with that. And that was my one concern. And so, but yeah, I still had a fun time. What about you? I'm going to give this movie a nine out of ten. You liked it? I, wow. I, this, was a, this was an awesome movie. This really? was a great movie. This is this really? is an awesome time with the movies. Go see this movie. Uh, <laughs> this movie is written by the great Lawrence Kasdan, who wrote the screenplays for Empire, Jedi, Raiders yep. of the Lost Ark, Silverado, uh, great movies. Uh, unfortunately, he did also work on The Force Awakens. <laughs> um, but, um, <clears throat> you can't sorry. always win them all, right? I have to. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, but, uh, yeah, first of all, um, this movie has an awesome story. Now, I was like, I was thinking about you when I was watching it because I was like, you were more critical than most people on Mad Max Fury Road mm -hmm. because of some of the, the plot morphing elements yep. of it. And I thought, I he's probably not going to like this movie because the plot morphs quite a bit. It and does. You think it's about one thing, like, this is my goal. And then that goal changes, and they go after something else. And then, like towards the end of the movie, like that goal changes, so it morphs quite a bit. But I love that because it's 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 you can watch it, and you can see it makes you realize what it's really about. It's not necessarily about this antagonist or that antagonist. It's about the journey that Han Solo as a character goes on. And I mean, I read one of the review in the paper, like, oh, this is just unnecessary for the Star Wars saga. And I'm like, define necessary. Like, it's an awesome movie that has a lot. It's a character study, and it's about bandits and. And uh, tra and train robberies and uh, you know double crosses mm -hmm. and just all this you know all this stuff that it's just I mean they do do it so well it's by the great Lawrence Kasdan writing it with his son actually I believe Jonathan Kasdan mm -hmm. um, and I just had a great time it reminded me a lot of. Um, Star Trek 09, which you know how okay, much I you love. love that movie. I yeah. just I have a whole story about that movie. <laughs> and um, actually, one of the things that really reminded me of that was Aldrin Ehrenreich, mm -hmm. who I thought reminded me a lot of Chris Pine in Star Trek, having to do Kirk. I mean, yep. this this and this guy has the goods. This oh, oh yeah, I mean, he he really brings it. Um, you know, I always thought leading up to the main thing I thought was he just doesn't look anything like him. He has this yeah. weird. He doesn't have a weird face, but uh, <laughs> one guy put it best. He looks more like Ray Liotta. I thought that kind of okay, said it. He yeah, has a yeah. different, uh, but I, I don't know. Something about like, giving the haircut or whatever in this movie. And, and it you works. See him, yeah, it like, really you just, works. just get into it, and he just like, he just like, I, he has that freaking Han Solo grin. Like, he does. He does like, you know, the trust me. You're like, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yep, just yep. like, you know. And, and that's like, what I was, ah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I mean. And like, that was our concern, and I, I feel I can, I can, yeah. I can mim uh, mimic that. He did a great job. He had a lot of charisma. He had that Han Solo it factor, that suave mm -hmm. kind of talking and kind of talk his way out of anything kind of yeah. thing, and he did a great job. I will say, and, uh, and I'm on the opposite side of you, I feel like the story, that's what I didn't like about it too much, is while I do love anti-hero, like bandit kind of stories mm -hmm. or that kind of thing, I just didn't feel a certain type of focus. <sighs> well, I do love character studies. There are certain yeah. things I like a character study because it's, it's mainly about his journey. I completely understand that. It's yeah. about his journey, his character development, and everyone around him is kind of evolving around him. I get that. But the actual focal point of the story wasn't really there for me. I, that was, that's me, though. I mean, maybe we can have a discussion. Maybe you can help me <laughs> see something I didn't. Right. But besides that, there's still so much to love about this movie. I mean... I really loved the introductory to Chewbacca and Han Solo. <laughs> yeah. Now, but now after watching it, it's funny the, how he how they meet's very interesting. And at the time, I'm like, 
Well, now I'm wondering how Chewbacca got where he is. <laughs> like, I'm Chewbacka, like, I Star Wars story. Well, I want them to do like a book or a comic book, comic book or something to kind of explain how he got from, uh, at the time, Kashyyyk, because this takes place after Kashyyyk, after the episode mm-hmm. three and before episode four. I'm just kind of like, well, where, how did Chewie get from A to B in this scenario? But either than that, I mean, I thought they had they they had just as good a chemistry as anything else. I know this is two brand new people playing these characters because um, you know someone else new is playing Chewbacca now. Well, he's been playing him since Force Awakens, so I thought uh, they they both played him actually in oh, they Force both Awakens okay. and Last Jedi. But I think Mayhew was kind of playing him whenever he was like sitting down. Okay, that I makes think they sense. just kind of like put him in like he's in the film, so we can say he's in the film. <laughs> yeah. But mainly like Suotama was like the one doing the heavy lifting because I met Peter Mayhew and he's not in the best no, uh, physical no, health. No, no, he has no, actually no. a hard time standing up. So. Yeah. Yeah, but either that, I mean, they, I think they both did a great job and they had great chemistry mm-hmm. together. But for me, the at my favorite movie, the favorite part is Donald Glover as Lando. I mean, I don't know how yeah. you felt, but that he was... was he was Lando Calrissian. I was just like, <laughs> it's just like oozed charisma and oozed just the character was so rich yeah. and good. He did a great job portraying a younger Lando Calrissian, and I a lot of these little points that I liked about the movie mm-hmm. were one a how Chewbacca. And solo meet and a how you know and the other one was solo and, and, and Lando meeting and yeah and there's there's just a lot of great relationships yes and I, just... I don't, and I don't want to spoil anything but they also go through the journey of how you know solo gets and gets his hands on the Millennium Falcon and I love that because that was always one of the things like well how did that transpire yeah I want to see that and I loved yeah. that they put that in there but there like I said there's other couple of things where <clears throat> I heard that they're trying to do. And this is where I'm going to kind of get a name because it's, for me, the story since it was so over where the ending, I didn't like. There was an aspect to the ending. There's, there's a aspect, big surprise. Yeah, there's an aspect and a big surprise ending. I'm like, oh, wow, cool. But then it makes me sit back and wonder because like, we can't say it because I don't want to spoil anything. But it's like it seems to be teasing a sequel, which isn't really. Yeah, because they because Disney said they're planning or they're wanting to do a three-part Solo I don't, movies. I don't. I don't. I don't. I didn't hear that. What yeah, I, heard, I heard. What I heard from the actor who played that part in the okay. end. Okay. That. Or that he's gonna like they're making they've announced a while ago they're making a Kenobi movie Obi Wan Kenobi and I think that that was gonna segue into that movie so a shared universe possible and that he's gonna end up um, crossing paths with Obi Wan Kenobi before really? the event yeah before so, the events of before episode the events four? of episode so something's gonna drag him off Tatooine for a little bit okay and he's gonna go and fight this guy I think but yeah but yeah the particular person that makes a surprise appearance for me I was kind of like okay what the hell because. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Because, well, because I can't say who it is, but this particular character, too, plays a big part in the canon of Rebels and Clone Wars and all this other stuff. And I'm just thinking, I'm like, okay, well, when exactly, I need to research because I need to know when exactly this movie takes place. <laughs> because this particular character has such a influence within the canon of, you know, not even not just in the movie, but in the canon of Star Wars, mm-hmm. that I'm just like, okay, how did he become... How did he become this particular aspect of mm-hmm. hierarchy within the film? Yeah. And it just kind of threw me off. And that also brought me to my le- one of my other least favorites was sadly Amelia Clark as really? Kira. I I thought she did okay with and her and her and L. Aldrin had some good chemistry with another one another, but I don't know. I did like the aspect of like her being like a survivalist, mm-hmm. but I don't know. I just didn't quite feel like for her. I don't know. I don't know if it's maybe because I see her so much as her character in Game of Thrones. Because I love that, you know, I love that show so much, and she does such a good job playing that character as Khaleesi. I just, I don't know, she did good, but I just, I wasn't feeling it as much as the other characters. Because the same thing goes for Woody Harrelson. I thought he did a pretty good job too, playing just this anti-hero, you can't trust, you can't trust him, or you can trust him kind of character. Mm-hmm. He's just basically playing an anti-hero in a sense, or we're, you know, a bad guy, good guy, whatever you want to call it. But what about you? Is there anything other things you particularly liked? I, I, yeah, I think it's a great. I think it's a great story. I think there's great character development. I think there's there's great character, like you said, with Woody Harrelson and Amelia Clark. I mean, where everyone where everyone ends up at the end of this story, it's just a grand, like like what I love about adventure stories and why I focus on sci-fi and action adventure because in adventure stories where characters end up because of the adventures and where it takes them and when you get something that actually has it all like very poetic, like this all happens this way mm-hmm. and it's like ah, like that's just. Uh, awesome, and that's the per- that's a great story to be told. And was it necessary? Hey, it's a good movie. So if they want to make yeah. Lando, Kenobi, Boba Fett, if it's a good story, if they can work a good story out of it, I don't care if they make uh... anything. Yeah, the Ugnots, <laughs> the Ugnots from Empire, like can get their own story. Right. If it's, if it's and as I'm good actually as excited for a Boba Fett and a Kenobi film. I mean, those could be actually good stories because they both 
our big characters within the canon of the universe, at least at least this particular time frame within mm. this world. And there's so many great stories to tell. I mean, yeah, some people are saying they're just being a cash cow now, but you know what? Forget those people. This was still <laughs> a fun film. Even though I gave it a 7 out of 10, I still had a lot of fun. I would go rewatch it if need be, yeah. if I had to. I still liked it, mm -hmm. and I loved the uh, yeah, the introduction to Millennium Falcon and how mm -hmm. when you first see it, you're like, okay, that looks different than what we normally <laughs> see, but they do explain why it looks the way it does mm -hmm. and everything of that nature. So, I mean, I can highly recommend it. You already said you did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go check it out. I don't think you'll be uh, you know disappointed at all. I mean, because there's this, there's Deadpool, and then there's still Avengers in, in theaters. I mean, this is a good time to be in the theaters. It's summertime. You know, go take a weekend. Go see all three of them, and you know, I guarantee it'll be worth your money. I mean, that's my opinion. Mm -hmm. All right, folks, that is for today. What did you think of Solo, a Star Wars story? Leave your Solo. comments in the section below and let us, let us know your thoughts. <laughs> also, like, subscribe to our channel so you can see more of our content in the future. And until, and until next time, I'm Ryan Murphy. I'm Josh Williams. And thank you for keeping it real. With real time.